I'm starting to use the Canon R50 because it has really good quality video. The autofocus is absolutely superb. It's a small and lightweight camera, even when I'm using my specific EF lenses. Today we're taking a look at the Canon R50. Now, it's not a new camera. It's been out for quite a bit now. I got my hands on the R50 earlier this year and I did really like it. It has 10-bit 4K video using the entire image sensor if you shoot in the HDR PQ mode. But the more I messed with it, there just really isn't much information out there about the HDR PQ mode. Now, we are filming in that mode right now because this is the only mode you can film in to get 10-bit footage off of the R50, which is what makes this camera special. Now, I want to talk about vlogging with the R50 for a second because this is a camera that's being touted as a content creator camera, but it doesn't have any internal image stabilization, which means that you have to have a lens that is either stabilized or you have to have a decent way of stabilizing your camera so it's not shaky. And I'm filming with an 11 millimeter lens. I'm hand holding the camera right here and it's really relatively light and as I'm not really moving around too much, it's not too shaky. But you know, the second I start walking around, you're of course gonna go see the camera shake. The positives of using this camera for content creation, it's relatively affordable, it shoots 10-bit video. If you're using EF lenses like I am, you can use the variable ND filter from Canon and not only get the stellar autofocus performance, but also dial in your ND and get the right shutter speed. For instance, right now, I'm shooting at 2.8, but I'm also shooting at a 1 over 50 shutter speed with the ND crank down, oh yeah, at ISO 400. So I'm getting the exposure that I want. After looking at all that footage for vlogging or really any kind of work where you're gonna handhold the camera, it's really apparent you're gonna need some kind of stabilized lens if you're going to use the R50. When it comes to microphones, there's a few ways you can get audio into the Canon R50. The most popular is probably gonna be using the microphone jack, the quarter inch jack, wireless receivers, which is what I've been using a lot with the R50, especially earlier on in this video. What I'm using right now is the Tascam XLR device that actually hooks up to the smart hot shoe that's in the R50. Now the difference between the R50 and the higher end cameras from Canon is the fact that the R50, and I believe the R8 as well, you do need to actually have power on the Tascam unit the camera won't power the Tascam unit itself, whereas the R7, the R6 Mark II, I believe the R3, those cameras will power the Tascam unit just from the smart hot show. The R50 is incredibly small, lightweight, really easy to use. It's got the flip out screen. I'm using the flip out screen now. Part of the reason I think the R50 hasn't really become the next big vlog camera, especially at the price that it's sitting at, has to do with the lens selection. Now, compared to companies like Sony, there are just not that many lenses available in the Canon RF mount, especially for crop censored cameras. They pretty much have three kit lenses that are all zooms, none of them are primes, and none of them are superb quality like their higher end glass. In addition to that, you don't even have companies like Tokina or Sigma, whoever, making third party lenses for the RF mount. As of right now, any third party lenses you get for the RF mount, especially in crop, are typically manual focused because they're not officially supported by Canon. Hopefully in the future that changes. I'm hearing rumors that Sigma may be one of the first companies to do so. And if Sigma gets the green light, I can totally see a lot of their crop sensor lenses coming out for the RF mount, like the 16 millimeter, which I think will be a staple for a lot of people trying to use the R50 as a studio camera like I am. They also have the 18 to 50, which is one of their best, smallest, great quality crop sensor zoom lenses. And then they have a bunch of full frame lenses as well, but when it comes to the crop lenses, Sigma already has a huge line of great quality lenses. So once Canon opens up to third party manufacturers, I think at that point, cameras like the R50 will start getting really popular. It's just right now there isn't a lot. And luckily I have lenses that I can adapt, but I don't think a lot of people are in the same situation. On top of that, once you start adapting these lenses, the camera does become a lot bigger, a lot heavier. You kind of lose that whole small and lightweight argument at that point. For live streaming, the only thing that I see can be an issue is I'm gonna be stuck with the standard color profile or any of the color profiles in the camera that are 8-bit. It is what it is. The ability to have the XLRs and have a camera that shoots full sensor 4K 30 in 10-bit 
in studio all the time is great. I've been using my FX30 as my in studio camera for over the past year. And then I had my secondary FX30 as the camera that I was really using in the field a lot. But the more I used it, the more I realized if I was able to find a really good 4K24, 4K30, 10 bit camera, I would really just need that in the studio because the FX30 for me was a little overkill as a studio camera because there was all these frame rates, resolutions that I just wasn't using but I really like the image on that camera. So now hopefully the R50 will free me to be able to use those cameras out in the field more. It also lets me play with this camera a bit more. So I do plan on having some content on the R50 coming out soon. I know I promised a lot of anamorphic content before I got rid of the camera almost a year ago now at this point. I'm starting to use the Canon R50 because it has really good quality video. The autofocus is absolutely superb. It's a small and lightweight camera. Even when I'm using my specific EF lenses, it's really small compared to really big cinema or studio cameras that I traditionally use here in the studio. And then it also has the ability to use the XLR adapter from Tascam so I can get really great pristine audio in. The big thing is going to be for me is without IBIS, in situations where I can get away with using my 35 millimeter that has the image stabilization built in, where I essentially will have someone camera opping for me, or maybe in situations where I put the Canon R50 on that new Hohem gimbal that I have that has the AI smart tracking features and is obviously on a gimbal at that point, that's where I could see myself using the R50 in the field, but using it to vlog like I have been with the FX30 or even the Osmo Pocket, I, I don't see the R50 kind of taking that spot just with the lenses that are currently available right now for it. But it is a fantastic camera for the price. The only thing that I think Canon could do, and I don't think they will, but they should, is they should consider putting C-Log3 in this camera because it has the ability for it. It could shoot 10-bit video. You don't need to have the highest bit rate C-Log3. You can limit it to a lower bit rate. But having C-Log3 over HDRPQ would definitely make things easier, especially when it comes to LUTs that people could buy. I know this camera would be infinitely more popular if C-Log3 was in it, and you've probably heard me complaining about C-Log3 because Canon has another log profile called C-Log2, which actually is a little bit better image quality, and that's where I think a lot of the higher-end cameras should be getting C-Log2, and you should be putting C-Log3 in cameras like this, the R50, that are in the budget category. But if you have any content you wanna see on the R50, let me know in the comments below. Now, before we wrap, I'm just going to tell you the entire setup I'm using right now here in the studio. We are using the Canon R50 with the Tokina 11-16 2.8 EF. Now, because it's an EF lens, we are using an EF adapter, but I am using the EF VND adapter with the most slightest ND, pretty much the most minimal you can get. And then, of course, to top it all off, we are using the Tascam XLR unit, which I'll have everything in the description below if you want to take a look at it for yourself. So thank you for watching, everybody. My name's Jeff Fagan, and I hope to catch you in the next video.